Oh god, is it time for another Pokemon game? For the first time ever, a Nintendo handheld gets two core Pokemon games in its lifespan. Pokemon Black and White comes squeaking in at the end of the DS era, giving the system one last hurrah with a truly fantastic Pocket Monster title. At first glance, it's easy to dismiss Black and White as yet another Pokemon game. And yes, it is very similar. You're a young kid with no dad, you travel the land fighting everyone and their mom, you get eight badges, and you defeat an evil group of people. It's Pokemon. But there are some notable improvements to the series. Black and White are a lot more story-driven. Team Plasma, the villains of the game, are far more prevalent, driving the story ahead and influencing where you go, instead of hiding in a warehouse waiting for you to kick their ass. And the gym leaders are real characters that are relevant to the plot, not just eight dudes that forgot that having a team of only one element type is a bush league mistake. The game is still running on the graphics engine from the last couple games, but the camera angle has been shifted, so the 3D elements are more noticeable and are used a lot more. Plus. Somebody at Game Freak freaking loves bridges, because there are a ton of them up in this game. The gyms are more dynamic this time around, with lots of interactive puzzles like roller coasters, cannons, and uh, walls made of honey. Bug gym leaders are weirdos. Oh, hey, the Pokemon finally move, but only a little. And the moves in the game have an extra flourish compared to the previous titles. But seeing the blown up, pixelated Pokemon in front of my screen still looks bad. I shouldn't have to explain how you play Pokemon, right? The monsters battle each other, and you try to catch them all. It's formulaic, but that's because it works. The addictive nature of trying to catch those little buggers, combined with the game's ease of progression, makes it a very fun and accessible RPG. If you're absolutely sick of Pokemon, I'm not sure this is going to win you back. It's not that much different. The classic formula gets a few new gimmicks thrown in, namely triple and rotation battles. I wish these were used more, because they're actually more fun than I expected especially Rotation Battle, which has your Pokémon switching places almost constantly. It makes a game that I can pretty much play in my sleep more strategic. Pokémon Black and White actually feels like a reboot of the entire series, largely due to the focus on new Pokémon. It's nothing but new Pokémon for dozens of hours. If you want a Pikachu, you better beat the whole damn game. It was exciting to get battles because everything that popped up was new. I can even overlook that some of these Pokemon are the ugliest or dumbest ones the series has ever seen, because at least I never saw a freaking Zubat. Not once. There are tons of things to do with side quests, or after the main story is beaten, and for those dozen or so people that like Pokemon contests, well you can still dress your Pokemon up and put it on stage. The user interface also got a total makeover with Sea Gear, and it's finally awesome. You can jump into battles or trades on the fly, and can even trade out of your PC box. There are a lot of other multiplayer features too, so check out the written review. Objectively, Pokemon Black and White is one of the best games in the series. If you're totally sick of Pokemon, you probably won't be won over, but there are noticeable improvements and changes. The story is more interesting, the battles are more strategic, and everything about it feels new. Just ignore how ugly these Pokémon are. For more on all things Poké, head over to IGN.com. <laughs>